we should get in the middle here and uh, move out a little further. There you go. Wherever you want, wherever you want to go. Oh, we see the first question. So now let's move up a little bit further. Yeah, it's been nice and nice to be uh, free, eh? Uh, all after all these years. Eh? Yeah, I like to be, uh, be out now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. What, what are you looking forward to doing now, you know, now that you're... Um, oh, probably just to relax, relax, relax. Yeah. I have to my son there. Yeah, yeah my grandchildren too. Mm -hmm. yeah. What did you think of the, what the judge said to you today? Yeah, it was all right there. Yeah, yeah it was pretty good there. What did you say to him? I told him that I was there. Uh, I thank him there. Yeah. 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 What did it mean for you to hear the Chief Justice say you were innocent? I mean, I was happy. I was all happy when I hear something. Yeah. I, saw, I saw you have a t shirt. Yeah, my, my son's got that. Can you show us? Step back here. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, is your name? Your name? Wait, yes, yes. See, they turned around. Clarence's name has been added to our list. This is the list of instance cad exonerees. So his name is there. Yeah. Made that in the last again? 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? The disposition paper in front of him. Oh, the acquittal? Yeah, the acquittal. You have the acquittal paper. Do you want to show that too? Yeah. I'm that you're a free man for the Being Show them the other page, Clarence. It shows the charge you face for 51 years. Here we go then. next as well as a result of what happened here today? What do you think the next step should be for the system to prevent others from being in your position? I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> is there, because um, we've heard in court, you're unfortunately not the only person in this kind of situation and Innocence Canada has helped other cases, they're still working on others. Is there a message that you hope people watching your case take away from today? Yeah, it would be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. Everything is, it will be okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, everything will be okay. That everything will be okay? Yeah. Do you feel that way now? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm... <clears throat> Clarence, yeah. do, you, do you think about your, your brother today who, who passed away? He was in the same situation as you. Yeah, I did, yeah. I kind of miss him too, yeah. Uh, must be happy from above. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I was, uh, I was just missing my, my brother. Eh? 
Yeah. You know what to say now. <laughs> yeah. So will this this will be the last time you hopefully walk out of a courthouse? Yeah, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That yeah. must feel nice. Yeah, it's feel nice, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Lutcher, do you want to? Sure. Are you finished your questions with Clarence? Yeah. His sister's Linda here, and Justin, his son, is beside him as well. Is there anything that, that you wanted to add, or that anything you wanted to say? Yeah, I'm just happy that it's over. Finally over. I, th I thank the Lord for that. Justice, but one of your brothers, your brother didn't live to see. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, my brother Russell. Yeah. So, what's the family planning to mark, mark the occasion? We're uh, about to tell you. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hang in. <laughs> we'll tell you. I'm sorry. Can you spell your name? L I N D A. Woodhouse. Anderson. 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 <laughs> and I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I was how I was happy. I was looking up. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I was looking up and I said, "Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord." <laughs> That's all I could say. Is thank God. And, it was a happy day. Yeah, I'm very happy. Yeah. You know, at the same time, I was thinking about my brother Russell. And. Probably hap happy to. What has what this been like for your for your family to have had this hanging over your heads for 50 years? Um, there, there was a, a big, like a big block holding you, like yeah, you know, not that good feeling. <laughs> You're trying to be happy yeah. and. Then, that you hope today sends to people who are watching? Maybe other people who are in a situation like your brothers were? Uh, just, you know, you're just have hope in your, uh, always have hope and pray that it'll be, they will find the innocent and like low, a good, a good lawyer. There's hope. For them. <clears throat> Mr. Monk, who you were saying, what's, what's happening next? What's well, immediately after uh, court ended, we were approached by the uh, Deputy Minister of Justice, and uh, he uh, uh, told us that uh, the Premier would like to meet with Clarence uh, this afternoon, and that uh, a statement's going to be made in the House uh, about his case at 1.30. Uh, this afternoon. We're not quite sure if we're going to meet the Premier before the statement in the House or after, but one or the other. So that's that's the plan, the next plan. It wasn't the plan until immediately after court, but uh, it was sprung on us. We weren't expecting it at all. So let's skip forward to this task force that uh, came up in court here today. Jerome. What, um, what has to happen for that? What will be the next step in having yeah. something like that happen? Well, the next step that we will, uh, as Innocence Canada, write the Federal Minister of Justice, Mr. Varani, uh, indicate that in our experience, not only in these cases here in Manitoba, but in reviewing other cases in Canada, that there appears to be a deeper systemic issue that requires a targeted uh, approach. We uh, would hope that the approach will be led by the, uh, the federal government and, uh, as I indicated, uh, involve uh, members of... Uh, uh, like Mr. Lockyer, who have uh, the expertise in this area. And uh, we would then hope to work with Indigenous leaders to uh, come up with a process of getting into the prisons and people who are outside the prisons, identifying cases where there are potential wrongful convictions. And we, uh, we think that that plan, if accepted by the Minister of Justice, is one uh, that, that can work. We don't have, you see, in Innocence Canada, we have three or four staff lawyers and we're volunteers. We don't have the resources to dig into all of these cases. Statistically, we know 
that with the disproportionate number of indigenous people in jail, that there has to be wrongful convictions. Oftentimes these people uh, don't know who to reach out to or how to reach out, so we're hoping that indigenous leaders will assist and be part of that process. So that's where we, we will be writing Minister Varani within the next uh, uh, week and proposing that uh, this task force be put in place. Can you get judges on side for this too? Like it seems like one of those things... We just, had, we just had a pretty powerful judge on side. If you listen to the comments of Chief Justice Royale, uh, we will be echoing those comments in our letter to the Minister. I think more importantly, we're going to raise it with the Premier. We're going to be meeting him as well uh, within the next few hours and, and we'll raise it with him. And I. I suspect he'll be very interested in the whole idea. But this is not only a Manitoba problem. That's the point we want right. to make, is that this is, these are issues that, uh, that have to be addressed throughout the country, and we know that from the cases we're working on in Instance Canada. You said in court there's, I think, three other provinces that are in Well, we're working on cases now, in, in Indigenous cases, in three other provinces that we're moving towards the ministerial review process. Uh, Saskatchewan, Ontario, uh, Alberta, uh, and Manitoba, of course. Well, the, those, co those comments are huge because you have a, a leading jurist, uh, the Chief Justice of the, the King's Bench in a province, who is not only echoing uh, what we are suggesting, but he's, in fact, it seems to me, endorsing this as a, as a way of trying to uh, address the, the problem that exists. So we, we think the comments are huge. Uh, uh, James, what do you think of uh, the Chief Justice's comments? Well, I've got a feeling you might be working behind the scenes uh, afterwards as well. Uh, obviously, they were uh, very powerful things he had to say, and um, it, it seems to me that Manitoba can really take the lead on this. I mean, we're going to move from a chief justice in the morning to the premier in the afternoon uh, in this province, and uh, uh, I think it would be great for Manitoba to take the lead uh, on this, and uh, we, uh, we're going to encourage them to do that, and we're going to be as involved as we can be. You had mentioned some of the, the challenges in uh, people who may have been wrongfully convicted, you know, connecting with Innocence Canada and, and getting that process started. Do you feel like what happened today will, will help that process? Well, I mean, I think it, it will. Uh, we also, and, and we talked about the new commission that's presently before Parliament that we hope will be become in existence before the end of the year. Um, certainly uh, the present government is pushing it forward as fast as it can uh, and that will help as well. Uh, we know from experience in other countries that once there is a commission uh, that the wrongly convicted can go to that um, they are much more ready uh, to come forward than they are under a ministerial review type process that we have at the moment. You can well imagine someone sitting in jail for a crime they didn't commit is not going to be very impressed by the idea of going to the Minister of Justice for help. Uh, whereas if they know there's a, an independent commission, which is independent of government, that will look at his or her claim, uh, then I think the person is much more likely to make a claim. And that's the experience of other countries that have that have created such a commission. To put this in perspective, in Innocence Canada right now, we have a hundred cases we are reviewing. Uh, we know that every, the success that we've had as an organization in the last number of years has led to a significant increase in applications uh, to, our, to our organization. So days like today certainly make people more aware, but we think that with the indigenous uh, uh, population, we, we would really hope that indigenous leaders will assist us in reaching out and making it known that we're available to help. But that's where we want this task force to specifically target Indigenous cases. So that, will it happen? We certainly hope so. Will we at Innocence Canada continue to do our work? Yes, we certainly will. And uh, we're hoping that in the not too distant future we'll also be back here on, on, on Russell Woodhouse. What would you say to people who, th who say, well, the problem with this task force could be anybody who's convicted, who's sitting in jail, would then be like, I'm wrongly convicted. Like, it would, it would act like another appeals court or something like is it, it would it be prone to abuse or 
No, the same principles would apply. When we review cases of Innocence Canada, we have a process in place. We look for certain common systemic factors. We look to whether or not the person is wrongly convicted. I mean, our name is Innocence Canada. So we're looking for innocent people. So we, we, we would be, the task force, if put in place, would have people who are experienced in wrongful convictions and who would be able to identify where resources should be best utilized. It's a bit of a mess that everyone in jail claims they're innocent. <coughs> Uh, they don't. The vast majority don't. Uh, and there's very good reason why they don't, because if they continue to uh, proclaim their innocence, their chances of parole are significantly diminished. So uh, when someone is proclaiming innocence after having been in jail for a, a period of time, uh, you have to listen to them. It doesn't mean that they are innocent, but they need to be listened to. And that's, that's what a new commission would do. And that's what we do at Innocence Canada. Uh, we get we get uh, uh, claims of wrongful conviction that we feel we're unable to pursue. Uh, and we say, sorry, we can't help. But there again, we get claims that we feel we are able to pursue. It's mentioned several times in court that systemic racism can be something that's hard to prove. Um, how do you think the justice system and the law needs to change to... Whoa, that's a difficult question. Um, I mean, in Clarence's case, it was very easy because things that were overtly racist were said during the court proceedings by the prosecution, I, hasten to, I, I hate to say by some defense counsel, and by the trial judge as well, which is why uh, the Crown, uh, Ms. Jules, and we, and indeed uh, the Chief Justice all acknowledged that there was racism inherent from the investigative stage, the prosecutorial stage, and the judicial stage. That's why we kept saying, and the judicial stage. Um, these days, I don't think you'd so likely see it overtly, but it's, you, you can sense it. You take a weak case and you see how it's turned into something that it really isn't. Uh, you can look at the makeup of the jury. You can look at how the jury was made up. You can look at comments made during the trial. You can look for inherent bias in individual witnesses and, of course, in the police investigation. Uh, it is difficult sometimes, but, you know, uh, you see enough of it, you, you can get it. You can sense it. And that's, but that's one of the reasons we want to encourage uh, Indigenous leaders to, to get involved in this as well, uh, because if anyone could spot that sort of thing, they could. So you're talking about looking at cases like this. Uh, and as an organization that's been doing that, how does Manitoba compare to other regions? I don't think you can say. I, I think that's. I, I, I don't think you can say. Um, uh, certainly, we've had a number of wrongful convictions in Manitoba, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, but there have been a number of wrongful convictions in in other provinces. Um, I don't think you can say Manitoba is better or worse than any other province. You have had the misfortune of one particular prosecutor uh, who has perhaps warped things in this province. Uh, indeed, he was Clarence's prosecutor, uh, George Dangerfield. Um, so to some extent, there's an imbalance there. Uh, perhaps, in fact, to quite a big extent, there's an imbalance there. Uh, but uh, I, it, it's inevitably a problem across the country that uh, uh, we're all human, our justice system is human, so it's fallible. Well, I, I think there has to be a much more brutal approach taken. We, we can't simply uh, pussyfoot around the issue when it comes to indiv Indigenous peoples who have gone to trial. In one case that we are reviewing, there was a Indigenous people were given the breathalyzer before they testified, before they took the stand. The prosecutor is talking about not calling a witness because he or she was, was drunk. Okay, these are the kinds of things that, that are out there. We know they're in other cases. And I'm not going to go as far as to say that there can be a presumption of, uh, of discrimination or institutional discrimination. But we have to be realistic here in that there have been cases like this where people, because of their heritage, because of their background, because they're indigenous, has played into the conviction. So we have to not be afraid of calling out racism where it exists. Now, is that going to be, is it nice? No. 
But that's the approach we have to take. And if it's going to work, and that's why we need the buy-in of the federal government, the provincial governments, and also the indigenous leaders. We really have to take an honest look at the system, and if it exists, we have to say it. And you mentioned that uh, particular prosecutor who was involved in this case as well. Is that something that Innocence Canada looks at when they're looking into a case? Is the, the background of the people involved in it? Well, Dangerfield is certainly a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, of course he is. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, to follow on what Jerome just said, I mean, we have the case of the Cusan sisters in Saskatchewan, for example, that were working on out of Kamsak. And there you have two young indigenous women. One was a teenager, uh, the other was 20, uh, who were held in the police cells for five days, contrary to law, uh, and uh, supposedly gave their confessions. Um, and that's a case that we're working on. So you ask if it's just Manitoba. No, not just Manitoba. And I just want to make clear your comments just now. Were you talking about Manitoba? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm talking about the country as a whole. This is not, you know, Manitoba has had its share of unfortunately of wrongful convictions. But the way they've handled uh, these cases, right from the, when we came forward with the ministerial review application, they accepted that there was a miscarriage of justice. And so it's very positive. Now we need other provinces to take the same approach. Honestly look at what's occurred, not be afraid of going into dark corners and uncovering behavior that's simply not acceptable. Now, how do we know a jury? How can you ever tell if a jury is, uh, is biased? We can't. But when we start looking at the cases, as James just uh, talked about, uh, I mean, I think that, uh, that we will find uh, examples of, uh, of bias, although not overt, there will be a cumulative effect of certain things occurring which can lead us to conclude that there was, what you call systemic discrimination, you call it bias, you call it racism, it exists in this country today. Uh, okay, Russell's a brother. Yeah. Uh, a, uh, Brian is a close cousin. And Alan or AJ Woodhouse is a distant cousin. Or more distant they're cousin. Related. Yes, they're all related. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, okay. let's go to the... Can we get everyone to the Twin Forks? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. All right. And uh, we'll meet you all there. I don't know how we're going to get there. I, I wouldn't mind. How far it's 20 minutes, apparently. Is it? Right, can I just get the spelling okay, good. of your Let's name? Let's get organized. Yeah. 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 Zabowski, which is Zed. Z D is involved. Um, A-R-S-K-Y. Yeah, I've been Thank you. And you're... I left stuff upstairs. I've Our sibling cousins, these ones. And we are the siblings. Two sets of siblings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. they're, um, they're, they're Brian's sisters. Yes. They're, they're, their dad and my mom are brother and sister.